Hi everybody, today I will be swatching Michael Harding watercolors. I have around 80 of them and this is going to be done on Fabriano Artistico Cold Press watercolor paper. First up we have Cadmium Yellow Lemon which is PY35. Now this color is, this pigment is semi-opaque, high in staining, is granulating and has excellent light fastness. Next we have Lemon Yellow which is PY175, semi-transparent, slow staining and has excellent light fastness. All this information can be found on the tube and also on Jackson's website. Next up we have PY151 which is semi-transparent, medium staining and has excellent light fastness. My favorite is definitely Ezo Yellow from M gram which is PY151 I must say that this Michael Harding paint is also really nice and pigmented then we have uh, next we have cadmium yellow PY35 seems to be like the mid yellow which is also semi opaque medium staining and has excellent light fastness. These paints flow really well. And they were swatched the next day that I poured them out in pans. Next we have PY180, which is Yellow Lake. It's um, semi-transparent, high staining, and has excellent light fastness. If I had to choose one yellow from this whole series, I think I would have just chosen this yellow. It's so nice and bright. Probably mixes really nice greens as well with PG7. Next we have PY. 35 another cadmium yellow, but this is the deeper version and it is semi opaque medium staining and has excellent light fastness Such a pretty such a pretty pigment next we have yellow lake deep which is py 139 which is my, uh, this one is a warmer yellow. I know that uh, Daniel Smith has this as iso line yellow. And then Roman Schmal has it as permanent yellow. It's semi opaque, high staining, and has very good light fastness. Yeah, you just heard it thundering outside. Next we have PO62, which is Brilliant Orange. It is transparent, low staining, and has excellent light fastness. Again, this is such a nice transparent orange pigment. And my favorite version is, again, the um, M-Grams Azo Orange, which is the same pigment. Just adding some more color here to deepen the master. Next we have cadmium orange, another opaque, semi-opaque I would say. Semi-opaque pigment. It is high, it has high staining, is granulating and has excellent light fastness. It's such a beautiful orange. I mean you can take a shot every time I say beautiful, gorgeous. And favorite in this whole video you can see the granulation and see how nicely the paint flows then we have permanent orange which is PO73 which is semi opaque is medium staining it has excellent light fastness and the tube says that it is granulating so 
um i didn't find it granulating i think it does have some kind of texture after dry uh, after it dries out and such a nice shade of nice hue of orange it reminds me of the flower crossandra sundance next we have a new pigment to me at least it is po34 and it is called orange sunset which is semi-transparent has is highly staining and it's also granulating and has excellent light fastness again i didn't notice uh, any kind of granulation but i did see that some of these paints have a texture not sure if it's actually granulation but i'm just reading out whatever's on the tube and on the website Next up, we have orange benzimidazolone, <laughs> benzimidazolone, which is PO36.1. It is semi-transparent, it's low staining and has excellent light, light fastness. Now, um, Da Vinci also sell, uh, sells this particular pigment as, um, I believe it's benzimidazolone orange deep. And it's just PO36 in that particular brand. But it's such a beautiful orange. Kind of reminds me of the autumn, autumn orange. Yeah. It's a nice, it's a pretty color. <laughs> then we have cadmium red light, which is PR108. It's semi opaque, medium staining granulating and has excellent light fastness I really love watching the paint flow and then we have cadmium red which is also PR108 And it's semi opaque, medium staining, granulating, and has excellent light fastness. Uh oh, there seems to have been some flow. I quickly cleaned it up and continued with a swatch. Next we have Rose Dore, which is PV19, which is also Quinacridone Rose and other brands. And the other pigment is PV97, it's a mixture of these two pigments. And it is, it has nice tinting strength, better than Vincent Newton's Rose Dore, which is made up of the same pigments. Then we have Pyrrole Red, which is PR254. It is semi-transparent, high staining, granulating, and has excellent light fastness. I think these paints are some of the first paints in any brand. I mean, compared to any brand, they, some of these pigments are, are really granulating. For example, I've never had a PR254 granulate Next we have, uh, we're going into the deeper reds, we have Cadmium Red Deep, which is PR108. It's semi-opaque, medium staining, granulating and has excellent light fastness. Sorry about the light, um, the light on the paint when it's damp. Uh, once it dries, it's much more easier to see, see the hue. Next up, we have one of my personal favorites. It's PR206 pigment, 
which is also Quinacridone Burn Scarlet and other brands. Uh, it's Synquasia Maroon in Michael Harding uh, watercolors. It is semi-transparent, medium staining, and has excellent light fastness. If I had to choose one pigment for brown, I think I would I would definitely choose this. Then we have Perlene Maroon pigment PR179, but it's named as Perindo Maroon. Such an intense pigment. But unfortunately, it has a large drying shift. But this one is much more deeper, mostly maroon. And Michael Harding's is semi opaque, medium staining, granulating, and has very good light fastness. I see why they replaced um, permanent alizarin crimson in Winsor and Newton from PR206 and PR to PR179 because they look so similar, the hues. Next, we have pyrrole crimson, which is PR264. It's semi transparent, medium staining, and has excellent light fastness. Anna Jane Blundell really loves this pigment. Next up, we have Quinacridone Coral, which is PR209. It is transparent, medium staining, and has very good light fastness. Such a nice uh, coral uh, hue. Then next we have Quinacridone Rose. PV19, which is semi-transparent, uh, medium staining, surprisingly granulating, that's what the tube says, and it's got very good light fastness rating. It does, it did dry with some kind of texture, I must admit. Next we have uh, PR122 which is magenta, it is semi-transparent, medium staining and has excellent light fastness. It's such a nice um, hue for uh, botanical painting, floral painting. Uh, kind of overworked the swatch there. <laughs> Next we have a mixture, a convenience mix of um, PR122 magenta and also PB29 which is ultramarine blue and this is amethyst. It is semi-transparent medium staining, granulating and has excellent light fastness. Probably granulating because of the PB29. I usually don't put like single pigments more but I just couldn't resist some of these convenience mixtures we will see much further down the swatch next we have um, cobalt violet light it's PV14 it's semi opaque low staining granulating and has very good light fastness Kimberly Crick tested out PV14 and found that in highly humid areas it can lose um, it can be less light fast please check out her blog and her channel she's just amazing when it comes to pigments um, yeah this is a very weak uh, tinting uh, this 
particular pigment has a weak thinning strength next we have manganese violet which is pv16 it's semi-opaque low staining granulating and has very good light fastness this has just really nice granulation I have the manganese violet from Da Vinci but it just keeps graying out every time I mean if it's the longer it stays in my pan it just grays out dulls down next we have Potter's pink which is PR233 it's semi opaque has low stain is low staining is granulating and has excellent light fastness this hue is much more warmer than the other potter pink, potter's pink that I have. For example, Roman Schmal has a really nice soft rosy tint to it. Next up we have PV29 which is Perlene Violet. It is semi-transparent, is medium staining and has excellent light fastness. This is great. Uh, to darken areas, especially in some of the floral, floral paintings that I um, that I do here, and I really am loving this flow of these watercolors. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any information about the pigments for these. Then we have PV fifty five, which is quinacridone purple. It's a good alternative for dioxazine purple. It is semi-transparent, medium staining and has excellent light fastness. Again, another pigment for floral painters. It's not necessary that just floral painters use it, anybody can use it. Um, next we have um, next next up we have PV15 which is ultramarine violet which can be used as a substitute for cobalt um, cobalt violet light or dark it is transparent has low staining and is granulating and has excellent light fastness next we have I call it the queen of purples <laughs> purple pigments it's the dioxazine purple or as Michael Harding renamed it as deep purple it's PV23 it's semi-transparent, high staining. This version is granulating <laughs> and has excellent light fastness. Now, even though I don't see some of the granulation, I'm just giving out all the um, characteristics that have been listed out on the tube. Next, we have Indian Throne Blue, which is PB60. It's transparent, high staining, and has excellent light fastness. My favorite version of this uh, pigment is definitely from um, M. Graham, which is anthraquinone blue. It's a nice replacement for Prussian blue. Then we are going into the blues now. Uh, the first, I mean, the second pigment is Thalo Blue Lake, which is Thalo Blue um, Green Shade. It's PB15.3. It's transparent, high staining, is granulating, and has excellent light fastness. It did have some texture after it dried out. Next up, we have Thalo Blue Red Shade, which is PB15.1. It is transparent, 
high staining granulating and has excellent light fastness Next we have cobalt blue. I always gravitate towards these cobalts and cadmiums. Uh, this PB28, semi-transparent, is medium staining and has excellent light fastness. The tube doesn't list it as granulating, but I did see some granulation. I did notice some granulation. Next we have Cobalt Blue Deep, which is PB74, it's semi-transparent, it's medium staining, it's granulating and has excellent light fastness. It's here is similar to the Ultramarine Blue that we'll see next. Vincent and Newton makes a really good Cobalt Blue Deep, and so does Schmincke and uh, Roman Schmau. Next we have Ultramarine Blue. The most widely used blue probably. <laughs> blue pigment. It's PB29. It's transparent. Medium staining. Granulating. And has excellent light fastness. Then we have the Lapis Lazuli Afghan. It's semi-transparent, low staining, granulating, and has excellent light fastness. Oh wait, it just has very good light fastness, not excellent, sorry. I wanted to um, add some more pigment to see it's mass stone, how dark the mass stone can get. So that's me adding some more pigment. But it's definitely much better than uh, Daniel Smith's Lapis Lazuli. Next up we have Cerulean Blue, which is PB36. It's opaque, low staining granulating and has excellent light fastness the cerulean, the cerulean blue definitely looked more like um, a cobalt turquoise to me uh, which leans much more to the green side then we have cobalt teal which is pg50 is semi-transparent is low staining granulating and has excellent light fastness my favorite cobalt teal is, again, M-Gram. M-Gram was my first um, watercolor. That's why I have a soft, soft, soft spot for it. I <laughs> can't talk today. Next, we have Thalo Green Lake, which is PG7. It is um, transparent, high staining, granulating, and has ex uh, excellent light fastness. It did dry with the texture, this one, though. Neutralizes so nicely with the uh, perlene maroon. Next, we have PG18, which is viridian. It is transparent, uh, non staining, it's granulating, and has excellent light fastness. It makes, um, it neutralizes so well with quinacridone coral. And you can make your own version of moon glow with this pigment. Conacridon Coral and Ultramarine Blue. Next we have Cobalt Green Deep which is PG19. It is semi-opaque, medium staining, granulating and has very good light fastness. Um, I found this pigment out of all 
to be the most granulating or maybe it's just the way that I swatched them out. Next we have PG36 which is Halo Green, yellow shade. It is PG36. It's transparent, is medium staining, granulating and has very good light fastness. If you look at PG7 on the left, you do see some texture on it. And PG36 also dries with that similar kind of texture. And probably that's what the granulation is. Next we have PG23, which is Terawatt Blue Shade. It is semi-transparent, low staining, granulating, and has excellent light fastness. Just trying to get the best um, pigment in the mask tone. It's a very low tinting um, pigment. This, this paint is really low tinting. PG17, next up we have PG17 which is um, oxide of chromium. It is opaque, medium staining, granulating and has excellent light fastness. I really like oxide of chromium, chromium oxide. It's such a pretty uh, color. Once you make uh, such, such a pretty hue, once you mix it with some browns, it makes amazing backgrounds. Then we have hookers green. Most of these greens are convenience mixes. The hookers green is PG36, PR101 and PY180. It's semi-transparent, um, medium staining, granulating and has excellent light fastness. There is some granulation that is observed probably from the PR101. Next we have sap green which is unlike any of the sap greens that I've tried before. It is PG7 and has PBR6 which we'll see see in a minute PBR6 is granulating therefore the sap green is definitely granulating it is semi-transparent medium staining and has excellent light fastness it reminds me more of perylene green maybe and a Sennelier has um, a similar shade a similar hue to this I'm not I can't recall what they call it next we have perlene green which is PBK 31 it is semi-transparent medium staining granulating yes granulating <laughs> and has very good light fastness so very nice pigmented paint I really enjoy um, enjoyed these swatches. I'm sure a finished painting would look really incredible. Next, we have olive green, which is PB fifteen point three, uh, PR one zero one, and PY one eighty. It is semi opaque, high staining, granulating, and has excellent light fastness. Yeah, I, I think I put too much pigment. Uh, these greens are really intense. Let me know which one is your favorite green or if you ever use green in your paintings or do you use convenience mixtures or do you mix your own. Next we have moss green which is a mixture of PB29, PR209, and PY150, which is nickel, um, nickel yellow, which is the reason you, we see that nice glow in the tinted uh, part of the swatch. And it's also nicely granulating. It is semi transparent, medium staining, and has excellent light fastness. Next up we have green gold which is PY129. It is transparent, medium staining, 
granulating and has excellent light fastness. This is probably the first PY129 that I've used that has some granulation. Next we have Bright Green Lake. I just couldn't resist not purchasing this. It is PG7 uh, and PY180 uh, mixed together. It's transparent, high staining and has excellent light fastness. Next we have New Gamboche or Nickel Yellow in other brands. It's PY150. And it's semi-transparent, medium staining and has excellent light fastness. Just adding some more pigment to see how dark the mask stone can get. Next we have PY216 which is Turner's Yellow. It is semi-opaque, medium staining, um, granulating and has excellent light fastness. Next up we have PBR24 which is Naples Yellow. It's semi-opaque, low staining, granulating and has excellent light fastness. Uh, da Vinci sells this as Naples Yellow Deep and Mgram also sells this particular pigment as Naples Yellow. Next we have French Yellow Ochre which is PY43, it is semi-transparent, low staining, granulating and has good light fastness. Then we have Raw Sienna Light, which is PBR7, semi-transparent, low staining, granulating and has good light fastness. Next up we have Raw Sienna Deep which is the same pigment and has the same properties like um, summer transparency, it's low staining, granulating and has good light fastness. It's just a tad bit darker in hue. sorry about the focusing next we have transparent yellow oxide which is PY42 it's transparent just like in the name just like in its name it's low staining granulating and has good light fastness Next we have yellow ochre which is PY42, same pigment as, this, as in transparent yellow oxide. It's semi-transparent, low staining, granulating and has excellent light fastness. Next, we have quinacridone gold, which is a mixture of PY150 and PR209. It is transparent, low staining, granulating, and has very good light fastness. Notice now um, they're not using PO48. None of the 
manufacturers are using PO48. Even Da Vinci stopped selling their quinacridone burnt orange, which is PO48. Next, we have quinacridone bronze, which is basically the same pigments for quinacridone gold, which is PY150, PR204, but it has PV19 as an addition. And uh, it is semi transparent, medium staining, and has excellent light fastness. Let me know your thoughts on this quinacridone bronze in the comments if you find it, if you think you're going to purchase any of these hues based on these swatches. Next we have Burnt Sienna, which is PR101. It is transparent, high staining, granulating and has excellent light fastness. I noticed that uh, they used PR101 instead of PBR7 as Burnt Sienna, just like Windsor and Murin. And nevertheless, um, I, don't, I don't mind. And then we have Pozzoli Red, which is PR101 Pozzoli Red. <laughs> I hope I pronounced it right. Then we have semi, it, which is semi transparent. It is uh, medium staining, granulating, and has very good light fastness. Now, all of these colors from here are granulating. All of these hues next, what we're going to see, are granulating. Then we have um, Herculane Red, which is again another PR101. It's opaque. It's medium staining. Um, it's granulating and has excellent light fastness. The hue is similar to the Pozzioli Red on the left. And uh, next we have Permanent Brown, which is PBR25. It's transparent, medium staining, granulating and has excellent light fastness. Da Vinci also um, manufactures, I mean, Da Vinci also has this as permanent brown and Romishmal has the same pigment, um, uh, sorry, Romishmal has PBR23 as permanent brown. Then next we have uh, another version of PR101, which is Indian red. It is semi-opaque, medium staining, granulating and has excellent light fastness to me this looks a little bit like um, a mixture of perlene maroon and perlene violet but something that is low staining not low staining something that's more granulating and opaque next we have Dark, Mor Dark Morillone Earth, which is another version of PR101. It's opaque, low staining, granulating, and has excellent light fastness. Next up we have Raw Umber, which is PBR6. We have three versions of PBR6 in this swatch sheet. And the red umber is semi-transparent, low staining, granulating, and has very good light fastness. So a sap green is made with um, PG7 and PBR6, not sure which version. Just darkening this milestone here. Then next we have another version of the PBR6, but this one is burnt umber. It is semi-transparent, low staining, granulating, and has excellent light fastness. Uh, um, Daniel Smith. Uh, also 
cells these pigments pbr6 as earth friendly iron oxides then we have earth of cyprus which is pbr7 it's semi transparent medium staining granulating and has good light fastness I apologize about the background noises. <laughs> Then we have uh, raw umber, which is PBR6. It's semi-transparent, low staining, granulating, and has very good light fastness. Sorry about the light on that swatch. um once it dries i think it, you get a better view once it dries out next we have van dyke brown which is pbr8 um i've never used this pigment i've never heard of this pigment before not that my knowledge is extensive but it's um usually van dyke brown is a mixture of pbr7 and a black like pbk6 or pbk9 but this is a single pigment van dyke brown and it is opaque low staining granulating and has very good light fastness daniel smith also sells the uh, has a van dyke brown with pbr7 next we have titanium buff which is pw6.1 it's semi opaque low staining granulating and has excellent light fastness Then we have indigo, which is a mixture of three pigments. It's PB fifteen point three, which is yellow, blue, green, red shade probably. And then we have PB K six, which is um, lamb black, and PB nineteen, which is a quinacridone rose. And it is transparent. It's medium staining, granulating, and has good light fastness. Next up we have Paints Grey which is a mixture of three pigments PB29 it's ultramarine blue PBK9 which is RB black and PB42 not sure which PB42 was used but I really love this Paints Grey hue it's different it's different from the ones that I've used before it is um semi transparent medium staining granulating and has excellent light fastness I think this has to be um uh, one of my favorite paint sprays. Next up we have wine black which is PBK11. It is semi transparent, medium staining, granulating and has excellent light fastness. It is also um Daniel Smith has this as lunar black and Roman Schmal has it as aquarius black. and that this seems to be much more warmer in tone here next we have lamp black which is pbk6 it is opaque highly staining granulating and has excellent light fastness it's much more cooler of the black pigments that we have here Next we have ivory black which is PBK9 it's semi transparent low staining granulating and has excellent light fastness I couldn't help but notice that it was more granulating than the other two black pigments on the left
so that's it that's the swatch video um apologize for the background noise again um but uh, here are all the pigments I hope um, you like this video and thank you so much for watching and please leave a comment below uh, if you like any of these uh, or if you'd like me to make more videos, more such videos comparing pigments from different brands. Thanks again. Bye bye.